Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your Mammoth Series portable basketball system with a 54 inch tempered glass backboard. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with your system. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what's inside the box. There are steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so be sure you have at least two other adults available. Before we begin the assembly process, let's take a look at some of the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two 3 8 wrenches, two half inch wrenches, two 9 16 wrenches, two 3 4 wrenches, a socket set, a Phillips screwdriver, a rubber mallet, pencil, a drill. You may see us using an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. There will be a step where you need a hammer drill. A tape measure, two 3 16 Allen keys, which are included, and a block of wood. To make this easier, we're going to use a socket adapter, a Phillips bit, and a 3 16 Allen bit. Because of the size and weight of this product, it's absolutely crucial that you refer to your assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Start with your middle and bottom poles. Your middle pole is the one with the warning sticker and your bottom pole is the one with the two holes at the end. On the crimped end of the poles, make two marks, one at four and a half inches and one at five inches. Then make sure that the sticker that says this side up is facing up. Now attach the pole bracket to the top pole, making sure that the highest point of the slope is further away from the sticker that says this side up. Slide the top pole onto the middle pole, making sure that the stickers that say this side up are facing up. Make sure you've done the previous steps properly because the next step is irreversible. Now we're going to seat the poles together by striking the middle pole on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard while making sure that the top pole goes past the 4.5 inch mark while trying to reach the 5 inch mark. It's crucial that the top pole goes past that four and a half inch mark. If you're having a hard time reaching that, call customer service before continuing on with this build. Now slide the bottom pole onto the middle pole using the same method as before. Seat the poles together using the same method as before, making sure that the middle pole covers that four and a half inch mark while trying to reach that five inch mark. It's crucial that you cover that four and a half inch mark. If you're having a hard time reaching that, continue striking on either end of the assembly until that mark is covered. And if you still can't reach it after that, call customer service before continuing on with this build. Now we're going to secure the poles together by inserting screws into the small holes on the same side as the stickers. The screws are designed to go through the metal in the underlying pole. If you're having a difficult time with this step, make sure your gun is fully charged and on the highest torque setting.
Take the long axle, slide it through a wheel, base frame tube, and another wheel. Now we're going to slide the long axle through the bottom hole on the pole assembly, making sure the pole bracket is facing up. Then add a wheel. Add the other base frame tube. And the final wheel. Secure the outer support tubes to the base frame tubes with the hardware. Be careful not to over tighten the hardware so you don't break the cap nuts. Now attach the cross brace to the base support tubes using the hardware. Make sure these brackets are oriented like this. If you find it difficult to push the bolts all the way through, go ahead and use a rubber mallet to tap them in. Lay the base on the base frame assembly, making sure the wheels fit into the grooves. Now take the small axle and slide it through the hole at the bottom of the pole. Lift the pole assembly up so that the small axle locks into these grooves. Carefully rest the system on its side. Don't stand the assembly up until the base has been properly filled. Now attach the flat end of the pole brace to the base, making sure the angled end is flat against the pole. Start with a bolt, then a washer, then your chain. Add your pole brace into the base. Just finger tighten the hardware for now. Repeat the previous steps for the opposite side. Attach the pole braces to the bottom pole with the hardware. Now tighten the hardware from the previous steps. Now take your backboard and lay on a table so it's face up. Place your rim impact spacer on the backboard. Take your rim housing. Secure with the hardware through the lower set of holes. It's crucial you don't forget the rim impact spacer, otherwise you could damage the backboard during use. Only finger tighten the hardware for now. Secure the adapter plate to the backboard with the hardware.
Just finger tighten the hardware for now. Place the eye bolt in the notch of the rim, then insert your rim pin through the eye bolt and the rim. Now place the rim in between the rim housing, making sure the eye bolt is facing down. Using the hardware, attach the rim housing to the rim, making sure the spacer goes in between the rim and the housing. Only finger tighten the hardware for now. At this point, go ahead and tighten the hardware and the rim housing. Now slide the spring holder onto the eye bolt and secure with the hardware. Just finger tighten the hardware for now. Slide the spring onto the eye bolt and secure with the hardware. Tighten these nuts to adjust the tension of the rim. Tighten all the remaining hardware from the previous steps. Attach the rim cover plate to the rim with the hardware. Attach a bolt in the washer to one end of the coupler pin. Attach the lower extension arms to the lower set of holes on the pole, making sure the long side of the bracket goes down. Now add a bolt in the washer to one end of the coupling pin. Now attach the upper extension arms to the pole with the hardware. This next step can be very difficult, so make sure you have two other adults available to help you. We're going to attach the lower extension arm to the backboard. Make sure you put a piece of cardboard under the rim so you don't scratch it.
Now connect the upper extension arms to the upper set of holes on the backboard with the hardware. Insert the plugs into the open set of holes on the backboard. Now attach the cap to the top of the pole. Now we're going to attach the gas spring to the pole bracket. If the gas spring cover has come off, it goes on like this. Make sure that the holes at the top line up with the holes on the piston. Be careful not to over tighten this hardware. Attach a bolt and a washer to one end of the coupling pin. Connect the handle to the pole with the hardware, making sure the lifetime logo is facing up. Attach a bolt and a washer to one end of the coupling pins. Connect a lifter arm to the handle on the side that has two holes going through the bottom hole. Repeat the previous step for the other lifter arm. To keep the actuator in the correct position for the next step, slide the padlock onto the locking notch. Attach a bolt in the washer to one end of the coupling pin. Connect the lifter arms to the gas spring with the hardware, being sure to add spacers. Slide the actuator clip onto the handle bracket, sliding it all the way up, making sure that the notch is facing up. Align the hole in the actuator with the holes in the handle bracket and then slide your pin in. Now slide the cover down over the pin until it snaps into place. Now attach a bolt and a washer to one end of the coupling pin. This step can be difficult, so be sure to have at least two other adults available to help you. We're going to attach the lifter arms to the lower extension arms with the hardware and be sure to add your spacers.
For these next steps, follow the link in the description below to see how to properly fill the base of your system. Because of the size of the system, you're going to need the help of two other adults instead of just one. We've already filled the base of the system, so we're going to move on to the next step. Now go ahead and attach the net to the rim. With the help of another person, raise the backboard up until the top of the rim measures 10 feet from the plane surface. Now take the height adjustment sticker and place it on the piston just below the cover. Before you begin playing on your basketball system, it's crucial that you anchor it down to the playing surface with the provided anchor kit. Since we're inside, we're not going to anchor our system down, but we'll show you the steps on how to do it. Pull the chain out until the last loop lays flat on the ground, then mark the concrete below. You may need a hammer drill to complete this next step. With a half inch concrete drill bit, drill an inch and a half into the ground on the mark you made earlier, being careful not to puncture the base of your system. The provided anchor may sound like there's something inside of it. That's normal and it needs to be in there for it to function properly. Take the anchor and place it into the hole you just drilled using a hammer to hit it all the way down. Secure the chain to the anchor with the provided bolt and washer. Repeat the same process for the opposite side. Thank you for watching our video of how to assemble your Lifetime Mammoth Series portable basketball system. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.